Stuart was asking us to preach, and, and like I say, I don't know how much I'll even be able to get out, James, but <clears throat> we'll, as David was talking, need to do our best. Right. And, uh, you know, if I'd have stayed on the pew, that wouldn't have been my best. And even though I'm choked up and I've been coughing ever since I've been here, uh, it still wouldn't have been my best. And, and I want to... I want to do my best for the church, but not only the church, for the Lord. Right. And because he did his best for us. Amen. And, you know, we know that nothing we can ever do, Keith, that can repay that. But the way we try mm -hmm. is by our best. Amen. So as, as they was sitting there talking, uh, David talking about doing her best, and I think Stuart mumbled this there once about a reasonable service is, what the Lord, and that's not what I'm going to preach on this morning, but I'm just going to read that verse. It said, I, yeah, you know, it kept playing in my head there as, as Stuart was asking us. said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So that's, that's all the Lord's asking for this morning is a reasonable service. And, uh, Appreciate that and know that <clears throat> God will give us strength if we'll do our best. And I've, I've witnessed that all my life. And uh, Ferlin Daniels, he used to say uh, all the time, uh, stand till you can't stand and then stand. And so that, that's good too. Uh, so, but over here, and I've got a lot of, lot of scripture this morning, a couple different places and <clears throat> if we had had to preach the last time that we stood, this would have probably been what it would have been on, and it stayed with me and appeared that all my life. But a message won't go forward, Kenneth, and it'll it'll stay right with you a lot of times. And sometimes uh, the Lord will change your mind. But two different places, and and like I say, Stuart, I don't know how much preaching I'm going to be able to do. So I may just read some scripture out of both places, and maybe maybe a lot of scripture, but. Uh, you all bear with me, and maybe that's just what we'll do is read Scripture this morning. But I want to <clears throat> talk about the Holy Spirit. And I want to talk about us this morning in living in a spiritual way and spiritually minded, not carnally minded, but spiritually minded. And I uh, think a lot of times, a lot of people, including myself, a, a lot of times, David, we, we try to worship the Lord naturally minded and uh, thinking that we can do this thing naturally minded and uh, thinking a lot of times that uh, maybe even putting myself that, you know, that I think what I'm doing is good enough to get me to heaven or good enough to, to, to get me on God's good side and, and, and knowing uh, down inside that that's not the way it works this morning and knowing that this is a spiritual way and that nothing that I could ever do would ever be good enough and that to get us to heaven or good enough to get us on... God's side and uh, knowing that God always wants us to be in his favor this morning and knowing that God wants to take everybody to heaven and uh, knowing that I believe uh, when heaven was created, Stuart, that it was made big enough for all men, uh, made for all of us, uh, didn't want nobody to go to this terrible place called hell, but the Bible teaches us uh, in the word, because of man's unbelief, that it's had to go back and extend the borders of hell because so many that won't believe upon the Lord. So uh, knowing uh, this morning that nothing we could ever do is good enough, Stuart, but they was one from the very beginning that came and uh, become flesh and died for our sins and that on the cross uh, uh, that made it good enough so that could pass on to all men uh, by uh, one doing what God would have him to do could pass on down the line to me that I would have an opportunity and want everybody to realize this morning that we all born into sin. Uh, uh, nothing that we could do to change that. Each and every one of us, if you're here this morning, you was born into sin. And I uh, uh, say that I go a little further and say with that, nothing that we could do to change in that our natural birth and that this morning, David. Uh, uh, but praise God, there was one come that walked on the earth uh, uh, 33 and a third years, Stuart. I uh, uh, made an opportunity that we would have some way to get out of that yeah, this morning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, nothing that we done, and I want you to understand this morning, uh, that God set up a spiritual way and that for us to be able to be victorious in that over yeah, sin, yeah. Uh, uh, be victorious over death and that this morning. I uh, made a way that we could die one time down here and go on and have life everlasting. Uh, and that after a while, Amen. so 
Uh, didn't expect to even say all that. And I tell you, wasn't expecting to preach this morning. But you all listen just a few minutes in John 1.1. One, one, uh, a very familiar scripture. Uh, and Stuart, it used to scare me to death. Never would hardly touch this scripture. Because I don't know, just maybe didn't understand it. And still don't understand a lot of things. Uh, uh, but we depend upon the Lord. Uh, uh, but in John 1.1, one, one, it said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, uh, the same was in the beginning with God. Uh, all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Uh, and Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Uh, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Uh, uh, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Uh, uh, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, uh, uh, that all men through Him might believe. Uh, uh, he was not the light but was sent to bear witness of that light uh, uh, that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world uh, uh, he was in the world and the world was made by him uh, and the world knew him not uh, uh, he came unto his own and his own received him not uh, uh, but as many as received him to them gave he power uh, uh, to become the sons of God uh, even to them that believe on his name uh, uh, which were born not of blood uh, uh, nor of the will of the flesh uh, uh, nor of the will of the man but of God uh, and I listen it said and the word was made flesh uh, and dwelt amongst us uh, and we beheld his glory uh, uh, the glory is of the only begotten of the father uh, uh, full of grace and truth uh, uh, so as far as we want to go this morning uh, uh, but in the beginning and was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, uh, so, Stuart, I can say, I spent a lot of time uh, uh, scared to death of the Scripture, uh, uh, but I understand this morning that God is from the very beginning. Uh, uh, the Word goes all the way back, Stuart, uh, and I'm proud that one day it was made flesh. Uh, uh, come on this earth uh, uh, to face everything that we would ever have to face, Amen. David. Uh, uh, so nothing that we can ever say uh, uh, that we've been through that God ain't already been there. Uh, uh, God knows what you're facing this morning. Uh, if you're facing problems, uh, I don't know what they are in your marriage or your finances uh, or just can't get along with you, brother. Uh, uh, God's done been there. Uh, uh, done I'm going to read this other scripture. I don't know how much more I could get out. But in Romans, and I know this is a lot of scripture, but two different places, and I couldn't determine which one to go with. So I'm just going to go with both of them. And this goes right along with what we just read. <coughs> But in the eighth chapter of Romans, it says, uh, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Uh, uh, for the law of the Spirit of life uh, in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Uh, uh, so if you don't understand, it's boarded. Uh, and it's alright not to understand, but if you don't understand uh, uh, what's made you free in that, for the law of the Spirit of life uh, in Christ Jesus uh, uh, hath made me free. Uh, uh, we God passed by one time uh, and knocked on your heart uh, uh, led you to an altar of repentance uh, it wasn't to just give you a ticket over to heaven uh, it was to make you free from this world uh, uh, free from sin uh, a lot of people don't realize uh, uh, what we're saved from this morning uh, I'm saved from the wrath of God steward uh, uh, these things coming after what I'll never see them because all done be gone. Whew. This place is going to burn after a while. He told them in the days of Noah, he said, it's going to rain. 
Nobody believed him, James, except Noah. Went and built a boat and ark, took so many with him, and after a while it rained and rained and rained. And he made a covenant. As David was talking about the first one, he was Abraham down there, made a covenant. And that just a little while later was Noah. Right. He didn't say it wouldn't flood no more, but he did say, I won't cover it with water no more. Right. He made that covenant with him. And that's passed on to all of us, still living in that, mm -hmm. still seeing a rainbow right. up in the sky, if you'll have it that way. I said, I'll set a bow in the sky right. to remind me of the covenant that I made with Noah, that I'll never, ever cover the earth with water again. But he went a little further in another place. He said, it's going to rain far after a while. Right. Now, he ain't never made no covenant with nobody that said that wasn't going to happen. He said it was going to happen. I, I, so we've got a covenant with the Lord. I, I know that this world's going to burn up after a while as we know it. I, I'll be God. I, I, but we also got another covenant I, I, with the one that was made flesh I, and walked for 33 and a third years. I, I did he died on the Amen. cross for us. I, I went on. I've got a covenant that I'm safe Amen. from this world. Amen. I'll done be gone. Amen. Don't worry about me. Because <laughs> when all that's going on, I won't know nothing about it. <laughs> How's it going to go down, preacher? I don't know. I'll be gone. Hope everybody under the sound of my voice is ready to go. Amen. I know that I know that I know this morning, Keith, that I've been saved. Got what's down inside, and I'm going to read a piece of scripture here that talks about so many times. I don't remember where I got to. Not far. Verse 3, maybe. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak. I'm glad the one we're serving today is not weak. I'm glad that God's plan is still perfect. Clifford's still holding it right in the palm of his hand. Still knows the heart of men, Keith. And he knows if we're doing our best, it's boarded too. Right. <laughs> he knows. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son <laughs> in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Amen. Wiped it all out. Right. Didn't want to be up somewhere someday. Uh, uh, people looking at God and saying, well, you don't know what we're going through down here. God fixed it or that couldn't happen, Stuart. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Uh, and later the Word was made flesh uh, uh, so that he could experience anything uh, uh, that we could ever possibly go Man. through. <coughs> Condemned sin in the flesh. And verse 4 said, That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. <laughs> For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life Amen. and peace. We all know that's true this morning. If you're a son of God, son, daughter, you know when we seek out the Lord, seek out heaven, seek out the kingdom of heaven and all of its righteousness, you know that life and peace comes with it. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Just a few more verses and I'll be done. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. That's why it's so important.
that we get in a spiritual mind. That's so why it's so important for two or three are gathered in his name, Keith, that we come together and work hand in hand, one body with many members, that we can get in this thing. And as David's taught in the Sunday school lesson this morning, all of us come together and do our very best. And boy, when that happens and we do it in God's name, God can work with Amen. that. Boy, you'll start to see the power move and flow from breast to breast. And, and these prayer requests that we hear made, Stuart, for the lost and for these ones out in their community that's not coming. I, oh, when the mother church goes to begin to get into power, I, it won't be long to that power start going out the doors I, in a way that we can't take it. I, all we can do is our very best. But when God sends that power out I, and it goes to going up and down the hollers, I, and going in and I, I send conviction up in man's heart. I, I, they'll have to come to church. I, and when they get here, I, I, we want them to see something. I, I want them to desire something. I, I, that we've got down inside. If I went into a church and I didn't feel nothing, didn't see no happiness there, I wouldn't want to be there. But now when you can go into a church and you can feel something uh, and you can see people that's happy, uh, uh, see people doing their best, uh, offering a reasonable service, that's all that's required of us, instead of a, re uh, a living sacrifice is what our bodies was meant to be, uh, offering a reasonable service, wholly acceptable to the Lord. That makes people want to be with us. <laughs> But ye are not in the flesh. And verse 9 said, Ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. <laughs> if so, <coughs> if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Amen. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. There was a part of me that died over on that altar at Hensley's Chapel. But there's another part that God placed down inside that's life. Want to go on and live forevermore. Want everybody to understand that. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. By his spirit that dwelleth Amen. in you. <laughs> Ain't it good to know that God's dwelling right in us? I'm about to hush, I promise. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Just a couple more verses. I want to get to this one. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Mm -hmm. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, I have a father. Now listen to this verse 16. We talk about it all the time. I like to say it all the time. Hey, thank God that the Spirit, the good Holy Spirit, makes a connection Amen. with what I got down inside. Mm -hmm. Listen to verse 16. I'm coming to a close real shortly. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. <laughs> I thank God for it. How else would we know that we're saved? How else would we know that somebody else is saved? How else would we know that we need to sing the song? How else would we know that it's time to do our best if the Spirit didn't bear witness? But the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. <laughs> And if children, then ours, ours of God and join ours <laughs> with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be.